Welcome to the June 18th Jalen Zones production user call. We have Jan, Dave, Jamie, Antonik, and myself, Michael. And let's start off with some news. Congratulations, Dave, for joining FreeBSD Core. We look forward to the many insightful things you learn, and I trust this group is happy to help out in any way, shape, or form. Today is also the last day to submit a talk to Fossey.us, which is a follow-on to OzCon and Open Source Bridge in Portland, Oregon. I understand some of you are in Oregon, so I encourage you to look at that. I will be submitting a talk, and last year we had a BSD track such that uh, it's uh, worth bringing these folks together prior to a PDX BSD con. Thank you, Jan, for blogging about how to create your own FreeBSD package cache with package base and jails and maybe hundreds of jails. This became a rather important technology. This is beautifully formatted, and Dan Langell will probably love to see this. He had some questions about how to use that with multiple jails. And any comments on this beautiful piece of work? It's in the doc, and I thank you for that. And you're muted, but I'll let the beautiful form formatting speak for you. It's not beautiful. It's lovely. Did you use this manual CSS or is this some nifty No, that's static uh, site just generator? write freely with a little bit of CSS uh, to clean it up. But yeah. I mean, it's pretty much copy pasta from here. So uh, the formatting is really good. Awesome. It's lengthy, I see, but yeah. Uh, that's my impression is you simply give it a go. You've been very ber verbose. I appreciate that. And you can be found on Mastodon. Moving on. Uh, it sounds like you have a bug to look at. I know you touched on it briefly. Let's see what you got. This is access to ZFS snapshots within a jail. Ah, yes. Do, 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 do. A, the, this is, is that, um, as Jan mentioned previously, you used to be able to create a directory just by touching... So create a ZFS snapshot just by touching yep. a directory in the snapshot um, directory. And this behavior was removed in OpenZFS at one point, somewhere ah. between 12 and 13, because the way the kernel handled this was was horrible. And now we have um, a proper sys control to toggle this, but it never got documented. So users have been going, um, why, why is this no longer possible for two years? Which is a bit embarrassing. And um, yeah, I found a commit that has the discussion in it. And um, basically now we do it properly. Ah, that is good to hear, uh, but it is under documented. Is it, yes. back to that question above, is it a ZFS bug? Is, is that where you're, yeah, this one. So we solved that now, it's now we decided it's definitely a docs bug because there's a commit with a clearly explained rationale Got it. what changed. Um, and in between me, Asking the person about this thing, we we found the we found the stuff. That's it's, it's great. Um, I, I'm very much of the fan of not having users jailed. Users have access to um, ZFS because that's kind of the point. You give them the jail, um, and they can do no harm. And in particular, harm includes using lots and lots of disk space by creating snapshots when you think no one's looking. Yeah. Um, so it should be something that's explicitly enabled. When enabled, do you still touch a file to get that snapshot? I think that has been removed. Um, oh, so how do you create it? You have to do else? this snapshot creation thing. Yeah. Oh, so the touching is gone. Okay. Yeah, but there's good reason that again it was a it was very convenient, but um, it wasn't handled the same way as like ZFS snapshot, blah blah blah, yep. which. Um, it had delicated permissions, and you could control that nice and easily. And the sort of touch feature is, um, hey, look, here's a back door where you maybe yeah. don't need the same permissions to do that. Overly clever. <laughs> yeah. I think the uh, big advantage, though, was you could be sitting on an NFS, a ZFS, an NFS exported ZFS mount, and you could create snapshots by just touching the file because you didn't have access to ZFS because you weren't on that actual physical server. Um, so, yeah. Extremely uh, clever. Honestly, I would consider that a feature. Yeah, I, I kind of agree until you read the bits about, hey, but the code that does this is really dirty and um, that's not good. We should fix that. So, 
Yeah, because because like I I can imagine this being used in like high performance computing where people don't have access in the NAS, they only have yeah. access to the compute where the uh, the NFS is mounted, you know, and this would be like very useful where you would not give them any kind of NFS access. Sorry, um, mm -hmm. ZFS, ZFS access, and they would just uh, basically uh, touch a file. Uh, is yeah. is there a workaround to make this happen? Uh, we we books. <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, webhooks is a workaround for anything if you, if you do yeah, it properly. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think it's any way that was quite as easy as that. No. Uh, Speaking of webhooks, uh, Dave, does does FreeBSDs um, fetch utility support post requests? Does um, uh, that's a good question. Um, I do not know. I remember. Discussing mm -hmm. this, um, I have to relive fetch because 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 that's that's like one of the issues why I keep downloading curl is I just want to do a post request, you know. So uh, that's that that would be a very nice feature. To we have. Okay, we do put, um, but I don't think we do post. That's very weird. I mean, it's just a string, you know. Um, so I remember um, Des gave me a long explanation of why this is a terrible thing to do. And I should I should not touch that. Um, he had some reasoning why we shouldn't do it. I forget I forget what it was. I can ask again. Okay. Otherwise, I'll, 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 put adding post is not going to be a big thing. Um, yeah, we I'll, 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 I'll have a look in the code base. I, I would like to add that because I would like to not use curl. I mean, most of my hosts have just two pieces of software. You know, it's just uh, VM Beehive and like iPerf, and I don't want yeah. to add curl just for the purpose of doing some requests. I, I would love to have it in, 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 in libfetch directly. Mm -hmm. And I, I assume most of the community would, you know, uh, to like would not download curl every time. But anyway, let's see what, how that goes. I, I love curl. It's the Unix tool I've been using for the longest. I've used it on <laughs> for everything from Novell Netware through OpenVMS now to FreeBSD. I've used it. It's the, I think it's, I've used it all my life, basically. Well, Dave, so, are there some key features in it that you'd love to see in base, like the the put or otherwise, or do you use the entire full feature set? Well, of, of course, I use everything. So, so the big everything. thing with curl, yeah. the, the killer feature is that it's battle tested against everything, and you can run it on every platform. It's not necessarily always an advantage, but um, you can, so there's lots of little things. Um, does everyone know the Happy Eyeballs protocol or not? I don't know if it's a Good protocol. Too. You've got you want to connect a web server and you get www.foo.com and your browser wants to connect to it and it doesn't know oh. whether it's going to get an IPv4 or an IPv6 um, server name back or both or even if which ones of those are preferred. So it gets some DNS results and has to guess which one to use and browsers will try both and then switch you over to the connection that responded first on the assumption that's probably better somehow and that's called happy eyeballs. And curl supports that in the command line tool and in the API itself. And that's, I use that a lot. I have a lot of servers where um, the user or the application that we're writing doesn't know whether it's connecting over IPv6 or IPv4. It's just given a host name. And huh. it's really annoying to have to make a command line tool that does the DNS lookup um, separately, works out which flavor it is, and then calls a separate connect routine because they need to be separate because reasons. Um, and with curl, with libcurl, you just go, you're the brow, you know, you're the you're the the URL tool. Figure it out for me. Nice. And that's the one feature that I I think is missing from many of these other tools. Like if you get two DNS names back, then try both. Yeah. That's, cool. that's actually a very good point because I keep wondering why sometimes my browser uses IPv4, why sometimes it uses IPv6, and it got me really mad. And which reminds me, an update from last meeting's call, I do finally have IPv6 in my house, but it is yeah. or, over a hurricane electric tunnel, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but I uh, can't complain. It works fine. Until you find out that your whole slash 30 or whatever is blocked. Uh, on oh, the no, they're, they're, they're not doing that anymore. They're, they're doing it over slash 48, the blocking, which is good, honestly, that they're doing slash 48. Uh, but now 
in Hurricane Electric, if you do an IPv6 certification test, it's like, I don't know, like 100 questions, uh, sorry, 10 questions. I did that and they gave me a slash 48, my own personal oh. slash 48. So <laughs> uh, now I'm responsible for that. And even what's even more beautiful is you they can even delegate the uh, PTR records, the RDNS to you as well. I haven't had the time to configure that, but I would love to do it. And it works flawlessly in the house now. Like every device that's connected to the network automatically gets an IPv4 and an IPv6 with a Slack. I haven't hmm. tested Android though. We're not much of an Android house, but I'm sure it would work. But uh, iOS devices and FreeBSD, they all work. Uh, Mac OS, they all work flawlessly without any issues, including things like uh, uh, search term for uh, DNS, you know, uh, for resolve conf and uh, DNS server in IPv6. And Mac OS merges things beautifully. You know, mm. uh, it, 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 everything is going fine, uh, I would say. Um, the only uh, complex part was um, uh, on FreeBSD specifically is uh, uh, figuring out if it's going to use IPv4 or IPv6. I, I still don't, I, I know we have like a policy thing and there's a utility for that in, in, in the base. I think it's called like IP6 policy CTL or something. I don't remember exactly, uh, but th there's a tool that like defines when to use which protocol. And uh, that's the only one that I have to, IP6 ad address CTL. Thank you, thank Ooh, you, Jan. Yeah. Yes. So th th that's the one thing that I have to go over and figure out also the equivalent of that in uh, Mac OS uh, would be also. It does of... really exist. It, it doesn't exist? They basically presume to know what every user wants. What hmm. do you mean by that? I've looked and failed to find any command which allows you to inspect and modify that policy or oh. an official documentation on what even is the policy on Mac OS. Okay. That was Mac OS specifically. Um, Jan? Yes. Okay. What Blue about unofficial? Topic. Let's 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 okay. uh, let's ping some Apple engineers. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's the man to ask. Okay. Uh, also, technically off topic, but very exciting. Dave has some news that uh, 9P client stuff, uh, client stuff is coming along, which was presumably from discussions at BSD can between Juniper, DFR, and Val. And yay, congratulations. Uh, Dave, let's maybe hold up. Did you get to touch on this topic or not yet? about chunking sockets and goodies, data chunking. No, we, we already talked about that. And we're, and we're Excellent. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Rod, do you have any topics? No, oh, sure. OK, welcome. Uh, Antrenig, do you have jailer news? What you got? Oh, I have multiple news. Um, Ooh, yes. So the, the TLDR version is I finally had the time to start merging code of what my team worked on uh, from different branches. Uh, first thing I did was the thing that you requested, actually, like two months ago, which is jailer init bridge. And now you can define a bridge name, which is, for example, bridge 100 and a bridge IP address. Right. So uh, by default, if you did jailer init bridge, it would only do bridge zero with an IP address of 10.0.0.1 slash 24. Now you can define that. So, you know, if you have multiple hosts and you don't want them to conflict, congratulations. The second one is jailer init DHCP, which automatically configures OpenBSD's DHCPD and automatically configures. Um, uh, DevFS rules for, for VNet jails. That also now has an option of dash B bridge where you can give it a, a bridge or you can give it a bridge and a range or you can give it just a range and it will assume bridge zero basically. Uh, uh, basically, I'm, my my goal is to like allow the user to run jailer init and now they can run jails. Jailer init bridge, now they can run VNet jails. Jailer init DHCP, now VNet jails will have 
automatic IP addresses. And the last one, which I'm adding today is jailer init PF, which will automatically configure PF. And I know Rod is going to say, let's do that with IPFW2. I'm going to add that as well. Probably not anytime soon, but it is in the goal. And the reason why I'm thinking of that is I also want to do jailer init DHCP dash T SQL mask, where instead of OpenBS, this DHCPD, it would configure DNS mask uh, if someone wants to use that. Um, so those are the main updates right now. Uh, also, I've added the dot .include support. So now it checks if you are on FreeBSD 14 plus. It's not going to do the patches anymore because we used to do custom patches to make things work. Now it will just do the dot .include uh, in jailconf. And, you know, as per our uh, opinionated concept is that you will have one file per jail um, that, that continues to be as is. Thank you, Thank you very much. And finally, uh, the the one that I'm pushing right now is also is gonna. You can do jailer enable and jailer disable. So you can do jailer disable and the jail name. Uh, all it does is it moves the jail name, the jail's file name, from uh, you know jailname.conf to jailname.conf.disable. That, that's it. Like there's no black magic happening there. I'm sorry, Docker people. You don't need to save a. An, an SQL database that has um, um, a JSON inside of it with a flag that has enabled or disabled. It's just like a file. You move a file. Congratulations. Uh, that's um, that's the that's the next one that I'm I'm, I'm adding there. And the last one is yes. um, uh, is Jailer um, image. So we, we, we what we usually do is you can do Jailer image fetch. And uh, yeah, terminal colors are now optional, which is again, Michael, something that you you requested. No, I didn't. Uh, you no, know, you are projecting that on the wrong guy. I would never uh, request that. But go ahead. You were saying about uh, you said you people. can disable that, right? I said uh, you can't, and then you said these are terrible colors, and I said okay, I'll find a way to disable okay. them. You were talking um, about another feature just before colors. Or... Yes. Uh, so so uh, jailer image fetch oh, yes. what it does is it looks into your version and it downloads the base txz of that version right this is what he's always done or you can specify a lower version if you want to download 13.3 on um, uh, on the 14 for example but now i'm also going to enable jailer um, image fetch dash dash package base which the idea of the syntax is the same, except that instead of using base.txz, it's going to use package base based on Jan's setup from, I want to say, 12 meetings ago. Yep. Uh, yep. So I did that on my machine. It worked like a charm. I it did it by own purpose. I did it 14.0. So I can also upgrade to 14.1 again. You just change a number in package basis config, and it it just updates the whole jail uh, without any problem. So I'm I'm loving both of these things. Um, so yeah, those are the main things. Uh, hopefully over the weekend, I'll 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 bring back Jailer Network Redirect and Jailer Network NAT, which will basically integrate Jailer with uh, PF. Uh, we also don't do PF black magic. I know many pieces of software like to integrate with the anchors. Instead of doing that, I'm planning on doing um, I'm planning on doing a dot includes because PF, just like jailconf, has a way to include files. So basically you just include and exclude files as needed. Um, so this has been in my team's backlog for a long time. We implemented these one by one. Uh, finally, those are done, tested on production on multiple machines. We're talking around 50 machines mm -hmm. on production uh, with like, you know, overall a couple of hundreds of jails. And we're, we've been pretty happy with the results. So I thought now it's time to merge. Um, Jan has a feature request as far as no, I can two tell. two feature requests. Okay, so request enabled equals yes, no, as per jail property. I think that's not for me. I'm assuming that's for Jamie. Yes. Um, yes. Because you just reminded me of it. Um, so when you manually uh, just like you always have been able to modify your jailconf and as a normal config file on your little pet home lab machine, it would be nice to have a, a jail property to enable or disable it without having to move the config. 
But for something like Jaila, you could easily solve that by having a directory etc jail.de active or something or jail.active.d and then just putting some links in. So maybe uh, I, I like I absolutely linking to the context. Yes. Yeah, I absolutely love the idea of that. It also like for Linux people specifically, they're gonna it has similarities to um, uh, sites enabled and sites available, yes. you know, but I exactly. hate it. I personally hate it. Like, it's clunky. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's still better than having to modify the config file. Uh, moving the config file between an active and a, an enabled and a disabled directory is fine as well. As long yes. as it's all within the same file system, it's atomic, yes. it's fine. Uh, it's just that uh, the sim links are easier to automate. They're just yes. a bit more scripting friendly because you have one place where you always know that the canonical path for this file exists. Yep. yep. Uh, instead of having to search in two places, so there is less potential for busy, less corner cases to uh, look out for. Oh, and uh, Michael, one one more feature, which is thanks to you actually, and your hey. home home lab, is <laughs> yeah. uh, this one has been merged. I don't think I pushed it because it's a little bit of a breaking change. I wanted to let the users, sorry, user, <laughs> know before <laughs> I I do the change. Is um, uh, now there is a dash six flag. Uh, apparently, you can use uh, letter uh, numbers as arguments. That's a thing. And the dash six basically is for IPv6. By wow. default, it's enabled. I, I really wanted to go a path where it would be by, oh, sorry, it's enabled by default if it's enabled on the host. Let me put it that way. Um, or you can do dash six slack, which means force the use of a slack or dash six, and you can give it a, any specific IP address and it will just use that IP address inside of the jail. Uh, the reason why this is a, a breaking change is for some reason, my team decided that in the same commit, we're moving from integer-based interfaces, so e pair one, e pair two, e pair three, to e pair an ID, uh, a unique ID. Uh, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's like eight characters IDs. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's a bit of a breaking change for users who like would not yeah, expect that. But yeah, uh, we're pushing all of those this week. Uh, we're, we're pretty much you know, done. Um, the idea of if, if everything here goes fine, this is also in preparation of jailer file, which is like a Docker file uh, thing uh, with, with the registry. Hopefully I will do that by the end of the month or maybe in two, three meetings, I'll re report that. Uh, I would like some help in testing. If any of you doesn't bother testing other jail managers, please have a look in GitHub slash Illuria slash jailer. Um, if you are by any chance in Iran, it, there's also a you know a server in Armenia. It's git.bsd.am. Uh, so we, we care about people who are sanctioned by the US government. So... Uh, That, that, that's my overall jailer news. Maybe in a couple of weeks when jailer file and IPv6 and everything is merged, I'll do a, a long demo uh, for users uh, in the future. Cool. Any questions for Antrenig? For feature requests, I'm absolutely open for feature requests. You just got two a second ago. Oh, that was for Jamie. I'm not sure I can do that, but oh, hold on now. oh, that was the first. We got one out of two. Okay, Jamie, any thoughts on that? Which is the oh uh, yes no enabled, and also the uh, passing of variables and properties. And that would be that would be that would be an amazing feature for me, uh, as as like a jail vendor. Yes, it, it would be very so very useful. That would be another feature, but the. That's not the one, uh, the second one I snuck in there. Um, so right now with all of my advanced jail.conf reuse and refactoring and factoring out common code, I find that unless I write a little wrapper to basically take a shell script and quote it so that it becomes part of a jail conf, uh, it's so 
painful that you have to repeat so many variables again and again, only to basically say export variable name equals single tick dollar variable name single ticks. For every variable you have uh, in your gel.conf. Or I you have, have to double quote for shell script. I'm I'm not quite getting, I think, what's being asked for. Um, okay. um, which of the two? So for the enable for the feature request as it as per you know per property in jail.com enabled equals. So where are you saying enabled equals? Are you saying in the jail enabled inside the jail block? Inside the jail so, block. I, I so that inside the jail.conf I would have an, a property enable yes or no a boolean or just oh I said enable the whole jail. Hmm? Yes. Yes, I see. Yeah, that makes it's, that that is a necessity. Yeah, uh, it's uh, so that you don't have to list. move the config uh, so that the blob uh, blob uh, sorry so that the glob no longer matches, because if you have a directory where etc jail .d, where you have all your jail .conf, it's per jail one file. Okay. I don't want I, I to see. move I that thought... file out of that directory just so that the jail doesn't get auto started, and I also don't want to track it in uh, all in jail list like in the bad old times. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That makes perfect sense. The only thing that I got caught up on was is I didn't see the as per jail property. I read that as per jail property, and I got confused. Mm. No, no, uh, I, I thought you wanted me to enable the jail part. property. Then, yes, enabling the, the whole jail. That's, is, that makes sense. The next uh, thing is that when you have uh, longer scripts, which require lots of potential inputs in the form of not jail properties, but jail.conf variables, so things starting with a dollar, like dollar my fancy version number or something. Uh, uh -huh. dollar packages to install uh, and so on then the problem is you don't want to have a non trivial shell script in a jail.conf being double quoted so that you have to go through the jail.conf parser and then through the binsh parser because it gets very unwieldy and writing an ad hoc quoting uh, implementation with, uh, with as a regex in uh, SED is not reliable and isn't something a user should do. But also the problem is if you just uh, use the shell to slurp it in with a dot, like in have a trivial little shell script uh, dot and then some relative path uh, or something, or even some absolute path, the problem is that the code, which then gets uh, sourced into the shell, um, is not run through the jail.conf parser, and so it doesn't uh, get to use the variable replacement. So all the jail.conf variables and properties are invisible to it. So then you have to register them as uh, variables in the sh and you end up with very, very repetitive, mind-numbingly boring, just verbal equals dollar verbal in your shell. Something like uh, this. Um, let me show you a, a pathological example. You can drop it right in the document as opposed to chat. Yeah. Thank you. So I have a little make file which generates something like this. Nope. And as you can see, it's just, it's not perfect. I know that it doesn't handle single takes in the values. Uh, but you end up with something like this and then a uh, hook. Uh, which uh, looks something like this. Uh, 
where you just reference stuff, which is in here, which just basically lists all the variables by exporting them as uh, environment variables. So what syntax would you like to see? I would like to see a way to, so I'm not totally, I'm not, there are multiple ways to solve it. One you would be to idea have, in your head? yeah, I have something? several ideas. So one would be to have been busy a different kind of assignment operator, which would implicitly make that variable also exported. Um, uh, the other one I can think of would be to have some kind of a filter which controls which variables are exported. So if you don't want to export them all, you could maybe have a glob against the name. Yeah, I, um, I wouldn't want to uh, default to exporting anything. Yeah, exactly. Well, but maybe the user wants to switch over the default, so basically export star or something. Door number um, three. Yeah, those are basically the two. Either the op assignment operator has to be different, and you definitely by default want to export the J name, for example. Um, I don't definitely want to export anything by default because the current behavior does not export anything by default. Sure. And I'm the other thing is you probably because you don't want to run into conflicts with someone having a variable called, I don't know, dollar path, home, whatever. So maybe you want to also make it for maybe a J property, have a, the prefix configurable so that you have a, the option to have a jail underscore in front of all the exported variables so that they don't collide with anything else, which doesn't use the exact same prefix. And that would save a lot of repetition. And the other is that there are still some things I can't abstract over with just the refactoring and to snippets to be included. And at some point, it may just be the easiest to do what, for example, Ansible and other tools similar to it do, that if a config file is executable, it's spawned with something like popen and expected to emit a valid config to standard out to be read instead of the actual file content. So that you have kind of config generators which emit config or at past time. Hmm. Um, so Jan, for you example, said how passing you in variables. It. Do you picture like dash dash my new variable that's not exported in this case, but is in this case? Um, the, you may want to have variables which are not visible. For example, let's say you have an API token which should never be leaked into the jail. Mm -hmm. A token, for example, required to authenticate to the load balancer to add the jail, but maybe you want to do that from the host and don't want to ever expose that API token to a process inside the jail. But those are the obvious cases I think of where you wouldn't want to export variables so that okay. you can so keep the secret, basically. What, what would um, this Either kind of dot uh, basically hide or dot export or unexport or something, uh, which would take as argument a glob uh, dot so that it's unique within the syntax. Like that? No, no, uh, just like dot include has. Ah. And oh. then as argument, it would take uh, in, sing in quotes the glob basically. And it glob or glob? Glob, as in globbing inside the file system. Okay. Uh, okay. Just take it as a string argument, just like the dot include statement does. Um, on FreeBSD, it would be easy to implement because our globbing uh, libc function already takes uh, function pointers so that you can point it at things with a tree structure which aren't. Uh, files. It's, for example, used to support globbing in Restore. So hmm. that the same 
blob implementation can also be the look at a dump of a file system instead of the real file system. Jamie, as syntax, does that make any sense? It does. Um, but I, I'm not I, I, comfortable with the code base so that I don't know if it would be less invasive to do it like that or if it would be better to have something like, a, I don't know, colon equals or colon plus equals or whatever. Uh, um, which... no, I'm not really big on the idea of, of that. that. That's unintuitive. I, I think the export is. is more intuitive. Hmm. Oh, and there would be one more uh, little yeah. thing from, from my wish list, which is the ability to expand multi-valued uh, properties and variables and just have the values be joined by new lines. Because right now you can't expand a multi-valued one, which forces me to do annoying things because I can't use for plus equals because then I can't expand it inside another one. For example, in an X. So I can't have a, a variable either. called a package underscore list and just plus equals any package I want to have installed because uh, then it tells me, sorry, you can't expand multi-valued uh, variables inside of strings. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the tricky part of that one is the... Uh, choice of a new line for separating them seems kind of arbitrary. I mean, I guess it's something that you don't expect to be any other separator. Exactly. It's the, it's, um, yeah, it's kind of the safe, among the reasonably safe ones, the, the one you're least likely to not want to flatten. Hmm. Uh, of course, you could say that you can have a, what would you a field separator property or something. Yeah. See, this this is getting into the problem that I but do try just to new line hold on, let him finish. Yeah, hold on. Plus of the use cases. Okay. I, Jan, I do but, try to yeah. prevent jail.com from becoming a programming language. Exactly. <laughs> Which is why I said just hardwire to new line. Uh, I'm so sorry, uh, Jamie. I was wondering if if there was an effort to add like uh, jail dash capital U, similar to how uh, uh, I think it's uh, CTLD does it, which basically it says, "Hey, here's a config file, but the file format is now in UCL." Right? Would you be open to that? Because I th I think that has a huge, a huge, huge merit to it. It would solve uh, a lot of pro pro programmatic. It would create new problems. In oh. what sense? In the sense that UCL without uh, custom macros is not as expressive as you would assume on first land. There are very common patterns in jail.conf which can't be expressed in UCL without registering custom macros. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem here is that a lot of the expressiveness of jail.conf comes from the fact that macro expansion is lazy. Hmm. So uh, in what, if I understand the code correctly, and at least it matches the observed behavior, is that in jail.conf, what happens is that macro references are passed, and what you basically get is a string with macro references from the parser, mm -hmm. which can then be expanded on use. Mm. Uh, whereas, for example, in UCL, macros are re expanded and replaced at pass time. So the value of a macro variable ha has to be known at the point the reference is first encountered. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can't have something like in your global config path equals slash jails uh, dollar name. Which is very common to find in a jail.conf so that in the global section above all the jail definitions you find default values which reference mm -hmm. 
jail specific configurations, most likely the jail name, but maybe the jail ID, uh, which are unknown at that point by just reading the configuration. So it's a reference and it's only a valid jail.conf if that is the part, recursive part it does not bloop and is uh, defined before the end of the global configuration, the whole configuration. So you can't have an mm. undefined reference in there. That's a syntax error. But that uh, allows a lot of things to be expressed in jail.conf without it having to become a programming language. You can do something similar with, by reversing the order of includes in UCL if you have a flexible enough uh, macro. I implemented such macros, but you have to do it yourself. It's possible through the exported, documented uh, libucl API. And there are other use cases where libucl is more intuitive to use, um, especially when it comes to the behavior of multi-valued things. Because you can just have, for example, a um, yeah, for example, a list of packages and you just add packages to it. But just package names or package name dash version. Um, in JLConf, you right now you can do that, but then you can never expand the variable again. So there are only very few situations where you can still use that variable once it's multi-valued. And expansion in swings, the most important one is not one of them. I don't know how hard it would be to just, instead of when you detect that error message because there is already code in jail, it's parser for jail.conf to detect this case and uh, emit a meaningful error message uh, to instead just, as I requested, merge them uh, by concatenating the values with new lines. But yeah, of course, Jamie is right that um, potentially someone else would like to see tabs or spaces or some ASCII control, maybe a unit separator or a record separator or whatever tickles your fancy, maybe a comma, um, who knows? But uh, I think new line for multi-valued is easy to work with in shell and yeah, is fairly safe. Any other thoughts on that notion? Well, Jan, uh, bang out the uh, prototype syntax if you think it's a valid idea worth pursuing. If not, such is life. Just joining the, uh, the multi-valued variables would be um, the syntax changes. Just that suddenly things which formerly were configuration errors are now meaningful. Hmm. So before the parser would just refuse to uh, load that configuration, and now it would uh, have a well-defined meaning hmm. as in just a multi-line string. Anything else? Uh, yep, go ahead. Yes? Any um, other topics on that are related? Similar-ish, uh, we have uh, the support in jail to um, dump the, basically the past configuration out again. Nice. Uh, I think it's dash E. But there is no option built in to filter that per jail. So it would be very nice. To, you can specify a jail name, but it gets ignored. You still get the full configuration. Oh, interesting. Oh, OK. I, uh, that's so that if you do tangible. something like this, Um, it prints the configuration out. Uh, 
more or less like you wrote it, but uh, what it doesn't do is uh, have any way to cleanly split. You kind of have to assume that the first thing, um, oops, what did I do? Oh, does it at least give a name at the top of it? And you, it's a exactly, you have to treat the name, but because of the way multi-line strings are yeah. possible, you can have a string starting inside a shell script, for example, a line starting with name equals. So to do it now, you need to really pass all the quoting, which, yeah, is annoying. So jail dash so because e, if you had a fleshed out, value. should it be jail name and only give that jail information? That seems yeah, reasonable. Exactly. Ah. It already accepts that argument. It, does, oh, it accepts it's not it, but doesn't error, do something with it. Okay. But it doesn't filter. Ah, yeah, that's a problem anyway. And the accepting argument is not using. Yeah, exactly. It accepts it and just ignores all other. It's a special case in the main function. <laughs> if you look at it, it uh, just basically a stop takes over, ignores the rest other arguments. So, for example, you can even have invalid arguments after that. So you this it also does not complain about. I think let's check that. No, okay, that it complains about. Uh, it still validates that you have valid arguments, but the, the actual parameter validation doesn't happen. You can't give it. So, but if you want something really confusing, uh, then it accepts this is try this. This is also not an error. Uh, yeah. So the first one does does nothing or gives everything? It all, all does the same. Basically, this here is the, it all behaves like this. Got it. Uh, Jamie, we're not here to create work for you, except when we're here to create work <laughs> for you. For uh, do you I like PRs for such things or what? Yeah, what's the best way uh, to just yeah, record paper trail. What's that? Get a good paper trail. So you do like PRs for paper trails? Yes. Uh, Jan, do you want the honors? You can document it. Uh, this document is not a PR. No, no, as in file a PR. Jan, go file a PR. Okay. And by Jan, I mean Jan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Watch your file it in file 13. File 13? Really? What's that, Rodney? I said, well, watch out, or he'll go file it in file 13, which is the garbage can. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, PR. <laughs> Add bugs.freebsd.org. Okay. Although that comes out as do in English, so never mind. Uh, .org. Yep. Cool. You mean the 13 inch round uh, filing uh, receptacle? Circular <laughs> filing cabinet. Yes. In German, that would be the uh, 13 Zoll Rundordner. Cool. Other topics, questions, ideas, funny jokes, t-shirt ideas, talk ideas for Fosse, whose submission date closes today. Now that we have three Oregonians on the call, thank you very much. Well, is uh, Fosse in Portland again? It is. It'll be at PSU, I believe, August 1st-ish. For those who celebrate August 1st through 4th, I got a date right for once. Yay. And the call for participation closes today. Checking the date. Anyway, um, and Rod, we may, well, various folks may put together another BSD track. Uh, so, other ideas, questions, topics? 
Yeah, so I had my just to circle yes, back sir. to stuff we talked about yes, last sir. year. Yes. Um, yeah. This is more for, for Jamie. I'm super keen to see uh, two things. One of them is to be able to provide tags on jails so that we can see them from user space. I will add an issue for that. Um, and, and the classic thing for this is tag all the, the web jails with wah, 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 so some arbitrary program can query that and throw it into a load balancer. And so that every time you add or remove a jail, um, we can then tell the load balancer things are better or different or worse or whatever. Um, and the other thing was, which I think is a much harder thing, we now have um, users, rootless chroot. I don't know if it's quite the right word, but non-root users can now do chroot. My testing was that the command itself doesn't let you do this, but I assume that the underlying C API now does. And the um, question the was, does. Oh, let him finish. Yeah. I, um, and my suggestion was, my, my question was, what about having this for rootless jails? So for me, this is really interesting, having rootless jails, um, not worrying about PF, not worrying about ZFS, which does delegated mounts for users, but having rootless jails makes a whole lot of things really possible that are today all requiring root. Um, So I'll do a PR, uh, not a PR, a PR, yeah, it is a PR, yeah, a, a bug report for the first one. And for the second one, um, it would be great to have some thoughts on that and see what we can do. Um, I'm totally keen to throw some money at that. Um, I want it that bad. A, a rootless jail, so that would be a jail that not only you can create as non-root, but while you're in it, you could never become jailed root. The, the latter is sort of an assumption because we kind of have those things today. So yeah, the, well, the latter is... To me, a security yeah. requirement. Yeah, so, so the idea was you'd create a, a, a jail as, as a non-root user, and basically you would end up still being the same user probably, so you don't get to change user, but you do get a jail. Uh, and the classic use case for this is you're a non-admin on a system or you're running some sort of CI tool and you don't want to hand out root permissions for everything. And... What what benefits do you have over a Chiroot? Fancy networking or tracking it or what? Um, just that jails provide all the setup things you already want. They they allow you to set up this this. Um... So if I take today, I can use Tarifest as a non-root user and create um, a new file system and then run a jail inside it. But that last step needs to be root and the goal is to be able to do all of this without needing root interesting yeah so, um, right now a hard standard for change root is that you have to on the command line use the dash n flag to change root to use it as non as super user because otherwise you could use it for a local privilege escalation if you have a set uid binary inside uh, malicious yeah. set UID binary. Uh, so there's a proxy TL, no new privileges, which um, basically disables for this process. And because it's inherited and the process can't disable it afterward, also its descendants, uh, the ability to gain new privileges via set UID or set GID binaries, which means that now it's safe to enter. The change root directory without being root. Yeah, so I, I stand corrected that dash n does indeed do stuff. Um, yeah, so that's and you still way, have yeah. to set the global sysctl to enable uh, unprivileged change root. Yeah, I've got that somewhere evidently already set. And it's under security.bsd. So, yes. Yeah, so so the, the the main thing for this is we we get reasonably close, but jails just give us so much more trust around the security boundary. Yep. People can't see the other file system. Um, they don't have the same That's view of processes, etc., etc., etc. You're preaching the converted, but yes, we have to explain exactly part. what the value is. The important part is, let's say you have something like a web browser where you run a 
complicated just in time compiler and a language sandbox but mm. uh, it's so such a mess that you have to expect someone to be able to break out the problem right now is that unless you're a super user and have a designated set of pre-created user ids and groups you can't really separate things other than j so if you had the ability for example as a browser to start a jail for each origin then a script running in one origin even if you get full code execution unless you also have a kernel exploit you couldn't use ptrace to attach to the primary uh, unsandbox process and debug it and thereby yeah. escape the sandbox and upload the offer, the user's private ssh key or uh, connect to the SSH uh, authorized, uh, sorry, the SSH agent socket and find out which identities are loaded and then connect on behalf of that user somewhere. Like you could even go so far as use it to drop things you still could do. For example, you could disable networking if you don't need it inside that because setting the networking to disabled would clearly not give you new privileges so it would be safe to allow a non-privileged user to create a jail either inheriting the current or aliasing to a subset of the current or disabling it just creating a new vnet would be potentially problematic to allow an unprivileged user so you would still have to be root i assume for to create a vnet enabled jail but aliasing uh, just inheriting everything or mm -hmm disabling an address family completely, potentially both IPv4 and IPv6, so that you had would have a process with it just isolated from the network. Yeah, so my, my thinking for this previously would be that you can set up your PF rules as an admin once that covers all of the IP addresses that would be created or assigned to, to jails. So I can do that once and then forget about it, and every jail that a user creates will be um, will fall within the, that existing boundary. So I'm not worried about that from the network perspective. Um, I wouldn't necessarily need VNets. That would, yeah, that would be nice, but that introduces a whole more set of problems because then the jail actually needs to run a full RC setup probably as well. Um, I just want a container that the user can run software in um, that is isolated from the main system and has a predetermined... Um, file system um, and today I can do the, the latter part with tariffs that's all that's fine um, I just can't do the, the truth only gets me part of the way um, we want just a little bit more isolation so right now the best you can do is have a privileged helper demon and over yeah. unix socket have it look at your group and uh, user id of the connecting process and then have some kind of policy engine. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I think if we had that helper demon, it would be the best way because at some point you want to have complicated policies and those should really not go into the kernel. So maybe it is for the best uh, that gets moved behind uh, in the wishlist queue uh, behind file jail descriptors because if we have jail descriptors with fine uh, permission control the daemon could just return our jail descriptor over a unix socket hmm. and I'm, I'm just thinking that podman, podman has the same pro um the same problem. Um, so, so currently, Podman that Doug's um, porting work for um, the OCI jail runtimes has the same constraint that you can only like on, on Linux you can run as a non-privileged user, and obviously they have other namespace tricks that they can do there to um, to give you fake root jails, uh, fake root containers. But on the FreeBSD side, we're doing everything as as root still. So you could use uh, some kind of that UID wrapper, but yeah, that wouldn't be nice. I think the proper way to handle that would be a 
companion demon which does have the privileges. You invented Doctor. And... No. No. <laughs> Good. No. Because the demon is only there to be the off for authorization. It's there to be a basically a cleaner interface to zoo. Basically, and I think of it more like an application specific pseudo. Just mm. implemented the correct way instead of for set UID. Uh, related to that and completely pie in the sky, I really like how ZFS handles such delegation. You just enable a user to do stuff and they transparently magically can do stuff without having to type, say, sudo. Just it's, it's really nice. It's yeah. just like, Especially how do we get that system wide is my question. <laughs> and, yeah. and does that trickle into jail? Hmm? I think it's sort of one of the problems. system wide. <laughs> Who's that? What's it? It only trickles in if it goes system wide. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what does a transparent pseudo look like, just hypothetically? And could that be a killer app feature in FreeBSD inspired by? No, the... no, 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 no. No, that's not what I meant with transparent. Uh, well, I don't even remember that I used transparent here. I did. I used it. I'm yeah, joking. exactly. Uh, so please don't put words in my mouth. No. Okay, I'll put them in mine. <laughs> no worries. Um, so I need to, need to disappear a moment to throw some kids who should be in bed into bed. Back okay, through. cool. And we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, Anything else? Yeah. Do you need an express shipment of uh, duct tape? <laughs> Amazon .de aside, or um, AT? Um, what you could do is, uh, if j the jail command notices that it lacks privileges, it could try to basically forward the command to that demon and then uh, try to have it do it on its behalf. Like, this user is allowed to create or destroy this jail. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you do that? <laughs> how would you cleanly map that without opening another can of worms? Right now, you could do it with just uh, sudo. Oh. Sorry? Exactly. You can, but transparent would be stunning. Right. Well, you can allow backup kind of users to do backup stuff. script around jail, yeah. uh, which just calls itself jail so that you don't notice it. <laughs> uh, in okay. path before the jail command, just put your, yeah. your home directory uh, bin dir in front of your search path and then. Uh, have a little wrapper in there, which okay. runs sudo, yeah. and as long as so that you can just use it, hey, I should just do that for my lab machine. It would um, hmm. well. I look forward to that blog post too. Anyway, uh, it's, sorry, we're a bit worthy of that. It's just the nasty rock man. Cool. We're at forty-one after. Anything else? You're back, Dave. New topics. Kids are duct taped down in the bed. Cool. No, but there was discussion about the meaning of toothbrush. Ah. <laughs> hmm. yeah. yeah, maybe we should just... Uh, we, we held everyone up long enough. Maybe we should just end it for this week and yeah. come back next week. Well, go ahead and like and go ahead and subscribe. Thank you, everyone. That's where you say bye, and I click the button. Bye. See ya.